Hello and welcome to episode one of Boxing Behind the Scenes in association with Betfred. With me, your host, Rob Tebbett. Delighted to be joined today for the first time ever, and it's also his first interview ever, by Kev Quigley, photographer of the Daily Mail. How are you, Kev? I'm good, Rob. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. I can't say I'm not nervous, even though there's going to be seven of you watching. <laughs> Or listening there'll, there'll be more than seven please watch this otherwise he won't come back um no thanks very much for having uh for coming down today to the uh to the booth as i say we're uh it's the first episode of boxing behind the scenes where we kind of take you away from fighters trainers it can be somewhat repetitive and, and go to the let's say the unsung heroes of the sport which is uh you you fit in there somewhere kept <laughs> quickly photographer extraordinaire um known by most people yesterday as the man who took the infamous Timber photo of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Um, so if you've seen that circulate, which I'm sure you probably have, that was by this talented man here, wasn't it, Kev? Yeah, it was few and far between the pictures that you say, well, well, not wow, but you're very pleased of getting. You go to a world title fight and you think you want to get a picture that, that looks good. You don't expect that people are going to be talking about it a year later. As like, If it's iconic, it's iconic, but it's... Uh, for me, I'm happy to take that picture and I hope people like it. I remember, so I, I told this story on um, on Twitter not too long ago. And I remember saying to you after the fight um, in Vegas, Kev, like, that, that photo is brilliant. Like, people will look back at this for the last 20, like, for the next 20 years and say, look at that photo, it's iconic. You know, Muhammad Ali and, and Sonny Liston, it's that. Do you remember what you said to me? Uh, was we in um, any, was we in a bar? <laughs> Yes. Was it was it opposite the lobby bar in the MGM Grand? I think there was no queue at the bar. <laughs> and there normally is a queue at the bar. And any big fight like that where, say, Tyson Fury's got... Well, there was more people outside, wasn't there, than there mm. was inside. If there was a gap at the bar, I probably <laughs> sent you off with an order, maybe. Yeah, go and get me a drink, is what you said, rather than um, taking stock. And uh, that's that's kind of what, what we like about people in boxing. You know, didn't admire his work. It's all about the next show and the next photo. So, yeah, fair enough. Very humble of you. But no, a brilliant photo. And uh, it is quite strange. And like now you've had, I mean, yesterday, the fact that it was circulating everywhere, people tagging you in it. That must be such like a nice feeling, considering the amount of events that you've covered and, and to be a small part of history, I guess. Do you know what? I just think I'm fortunate that if you look at boxers, they give their life f for 36 minutes and to be at the heavyweight championship of the world without going through any of what they've gone through, I'm lucky. I've pressed two or three buttons. You know, Tyson's had to go through, well, to hell and back to fight the heavyweight champion of the world that most people didn't think he was going to win, especially the first time round. Then again on the second, it was how long is he going to run for? Well, he beat him up and I took a picture. <laughs> so I'm lucky. Uh, yeah, I'm lucky to I'm lucky to be one of the... I mean, I was the only UK photographer ringside and there was four of us out there. So I was lucky to be one of the, that one person, never mind, you know, across the world, that people will want to do it. So when you, you know, I'm just lucky. And you're literally the closest that you can possibly be. When you're, when you're ringside photography of people who don't know, you are literally elbows on the, the ring apron. Elbows on the canvas. Um, we are in front of the television cameras. So everyone is behind us. There is no more front row. Judges tell us to sit back because they can't see. So maybe that's why there's some bad bad judges. <laughs> yeah, blame you. Yeah. Blame the photographers it's, the next time we get a terrible decision. It's, it, it's my fault. <laughs> um Talk to me about the kind of the origins, right? So, always interested in photography growing up, messing around with a camera, disposable. Like, what? How did how did you get into kind of sports photography or even just photography? Well, I only agreed to come on this because, as you can see, like television wouldn't suit me. <laughs> now there's like two cameras facing, and I wasn't expecting that. So, behind the camera is better for me, uh, more comfortable. Uh, I think, and growing up, I wanted to be a footballer, and I realised I wasn't going to be pretty early on. So. <laughs> I always had like a disposable. I loved a disposable. I had a Polaroid, but they were so expensive. They still are so expensive. Um, and I just I had a friend of a family that was a photographer and I just couldn't believe that you could sit on the front row and capture. Because I had pictures of magazines and posters on the wall and to be the person that could take that was just a bit of a wow for me. So I was lucky to know someone um, to look at them and go, well, 
that's where I'm going. Forget maths. Mm. <laughs> It doesn't work out like that later on in life, does it? But no, not quite. But look, well, it's worked out okay for you. Um, yeah. What are the, like when? It, do you remember the first time that you kind of seriously photographed something? Keep it clean, you know. Uh, well, <laughs> as you can see, there's nothing that dirty. Um, the first. Would you like a like a sporting event? Or? A sporting well, to be fair, either or a normal event and then a sporting event. I mean, I was in year ten, so fourteen. I went and done work experience with that same photographer. Uh, I'll name drop him, Lawrence Lustig. Shout uh, out Lawrence Lustig. Yeah, big shout out Lawrence Lustig. Mm. Um, he was a friend of the family, and I mean, he was Matram's photographer. Well, he still is for darts. Um, yeah, he's a he's a brilliant guy as well, and he took me on work experience. So from fourteen, I was at. I think it was Chelsea training, I think I did. I, I think it might have been Dennis Wise and I think Di Matteo, mm. Viali, Hullet. It was around that era and I was photographing training. That the old training ground, the old, the old training ground, ground, the really horrible, yes. like muddy one, the the Ken Bates era it, training Yeah, it was, ground. yeah, it was a QPR's training ground mm. and you can actually, back then, if they didn't let you in, you could just photograph it from the road over the fence. <laughs> so from then I was like, well, I don't, can you really do that? So then I knew that I'm gonna, you know, make my way. But then I went on to be an editor, so I would edit their stuff instead of taking the pictures. So that was sort of the progression: working in the darkroom, developing film. Um, but any sport, I mean, boxing was the one I loved, but still love it more so than football. Yeah, I never got grounded from watching football on the TV, but I did get grounded twice for getting up in the middle of the night and paying for the box office um, for Lennox Lewis fight and for, it would have been Naz versus Kevin Kelly. So I got grounded for both of them because I didn't ask to build permission. <laughs> it wasn't red button, but I phoned up and I, yeah. Put a deep voice on. Uh, well, I just, I just, requested the payment and yeah to be fair they don't, don't really ask too much questions if you've got the card to hand then yeah, yeah. well i don't even think it was card it oh was no ex- back then it would have been added to your bill yeah it was added to my bill and my dad didn't know about the first one he just got the bill so i got up in the middle of the night and went downstairs to watch it i got grounded for that and then i had a sleepover he didn't know he had i had a sleepover with two of my friends and again i said oh don't worry i'm going to get the box in and then dad came down in the middle of the night and Lennox Lewis is on the telly and he just he went mad but I mean dad loves boxing so he yeah he sat down and watched it with us and he said the next time you can pay and but from then on I was like I want to go I want to I mean you say about diehard fans I mean there's people that are so much more knowledgeable than the sport but my two friends said wake me up for the main event well I watched every I watched every fight because I want to watch every fight. And, and I, from then on, I was like, I want to photograph the heavyweight championship of the world in Las Vegas. And Tyson Fury did that last year. So that's the sort of full circle of the, you know, that picture that you see. Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Well, first and foremost, I think it's, it's fair to say that, um, you know, it's not the worst thing that teenagers have ordered on pay-per-view in the middle of the night when their parents aren't around. So I'm sure you'd be forgiven for that. Um, do you remember the first boxing event you did? Um, the first boxing event I did, I think, was around. See, I've done. I, I was trying to work it out. Only six or seven, sometimes eight, sometimes ten. But you don't get many ringside. Um, the first time I was ever ringside for a fight was George Groves versus James DeGale. Um Properly, as in a proper fight. I mean, I'd taken some pictures at the York Hall um, that I can't remember who fought, where I just sort of blagged my way to photographing it. Um, in two, uh, that was 2011 would have been I think Groves de Gale 2007 I think it was junior ABAs I was editing for Lawrence he was photographing it for the junior ABAs and I definitely went and photographed a couple of fights either on a higher you know balcony while two fights were going on at the same time so I definitely you know, I was photographing stuff then but I was going to fights quite a lot basically sitting behind a photographer with a laptop and they were passing me the, the card in between rounds and I was editing. So I knew what a picture should look like, what what I should be looking for way before I got to, you know, when you say, oh, was that your first fight? But it wasn't really. Mm. I was just pressing, I was just operating the camera more than just, you know, oh, what am I doing here? Mm. 
Talk to me about your your kind of your your fight week. Like, let's start with the UK one. We'll speak about kind of America and traveling further afield. But talk me through your fight week because yours is obviously very different to mine uh, and everybody else's. I know that you've. We'll talk about kind of the fighters that you you've got relationships with or worked with closely soon. I know that you've done lots of bits with David Hay, Derek Chisora, obviously Fury, etc. But what's your kind of your week, your average week in a fight week? Say a big fight. Um. I try to get all my work done before fight week. So it's a bit smoke and mirrors. Mm. I, I would like my week to look like it's a bit of a jolly more than say, you know, cause it stops the competitors getting, if I've done it all, if I can lead them to a spot of lunch during the week would stop them doing something I may have already done. Mm. Um, the key components for a fight week for me, obviously for a UK one, we have the press conference. Uh, we usually have um, training, um, public workout which is not actually great photographically mm. that's for TV um, then we have the weigh in and then we have the fight um, covering sport I'll actually cover other other things going on so there might be football on that week I will end up going to the press conference at lunchtime and then shooting off to a football match but if it's a big big week I'm just on that for the week you know it's about like 12 or 1 o'clock normally you know the press conference you hope that something really is going to kick off there. Mm. Um, I think one of the ones I was under pressure for would have been, it was around, I think it was Chisora White 1. Mm. And I've got a good relationship with Derek and Derek was kind of going through his transitional period of being the hated to the loved. Mm. And he wasn't getting, he wanted, he wanted a share. He wanted a share of the pay-per-view, I think. And he wasn't getting it because he was, it was undercard. And so Joshua he, Joshua Molina, Joshua I think Brazil, it, yeah, it was. It, it, well, yeah, it was in Manchester. I think it was Molina. And I, it, from it was Christmas time, just because the, the hotels were astronomical, and it was cheaper for me to go up Tuesday and to stay till Sunday than it was to go say Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There wasn't much in it, but that meant I had to do the undercard press conference, which the office said we've got no interest in. But I was like, oh no, I've got, I've got, the, you know, I, I got the secretary to book it, and I said to the office that this press conference is going to go, you know, it's going to, it's going to be quite lively. Mm. Derek turns up, and he is really quite flat, and um, he said, I didn't think you'd be here for this, and I was like, oh well, you know, for a press conference like this, it's going to, it's going to go off, and he said, I'm not going off. <laughs> so I said, what? I said, no, really? He went, no, I'm going to sit there in silence. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. And I said, uh, you're, you're joking me. I was like, I'm, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble here because my office, they want me to do another job today. And he just sort of said, oh, right, well, no, that's tough. Ten minutes later, or half an hour later, he's picked up the table. and I think you've seen the picture. <laughs> he's thrown it and it's gone above Eddie's head. So I think that's my most memorable press conference picture. Mm. It's gone chaotic it's there's fights breaking out it's properly it's gone off it's it's not it is you know, i'd say it's not for show I, it, it's gone off you've got uh dean white being like hauled out the back by security dylan's going mad tibbs is going mad anyway i'm like we're frantically trying to get this picture sent out because online are going to be like well that's you know, they've seen it live on sky sports there, there's a lot of beeps going on mm. it's an interesting story I'm editing the pictures as fast as I can. I see a, I to sort of feel this breathing on my shoulder. And he's like, oh, what does that look like? And it was Derek. <laughs> the chaos is still going on outside. Derek's just just completely detached himself for it. Sat down, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. Oh, that's good. No, don't send that one, look at my face. Oh no, send that one. Oh, look at Eddie's face. <laughs> look at, he's like, look at Eddie's face. Oh yeah, no, send me that, I'll, I'll put that out. I said, I thought it's all going off. And he went, well, you've got a picture, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, he didn't do it for me, did he? But it, it, in the back of his head, you know, he was like, "Oh, right, well, I can't sell in the fight." Yeah, he, you know, so that that that's that then makes the fight weak. Yeah, the pressure's kind of off then. And you've done you've done quite a lot of bits with him in the past. I mean, I know for the even for the rematch, you were kind of around him for a fair bit. Um, I remember you were kind of 
around David Hay, Nicole McDermott obviously works for Haymaker um, and Derek around that week. What's he like away from, because a, a lot of people, I mean, people ask me what Derek's like. I have no idea what Derek's like. I don't know Derek really outside of the occasional interview, which by the way, he's never actually finished an interview with me. He just sort of walks off when he's done. You find Derek, no problem. Um, what is he like away from kind of the, the cameras, so to speak? Um, he loves his family. He's a good person. He'll FaceTime me randomly and be like, oh, how's, how's Laura? Uh, put her on, make sure on the phone, what's she up to? Have I proposed yet? Am I married? He's very keen <laughs> on family life. He's, I mean, some of my friends, he's immediately asked about what their businesses are, tried to get him investment, said he'll invest in them. Like he's, he's very, he's very business minded. And it, it shocks me that because when I first, probably as everyone that would look at it go, well, he's just some, Nutcase. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's 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 the. You know, he is. A, he, look, he is a nutcase. <laughs> like, it kind of makes him even a bit more unhinged. The fact that he's also kind of taken an intro. I'd I'd be terrified if Derek Chisora started asking me personal questions. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, I mean, he's intimidating. Mm. Um, but he's he's a he he cares, and he and you always hear the commentator and anyone when I've not been at a fight and they talk about it and they say like Adam Smith will say, you know, away from the fights, he's a great person. And you, you look at the puzzled, puzzled look on people's faces like he's just an idiot because he has got, you know, there's charges against him for things. And you're like, and I, you know, you say, well, why? Well, yeah, I think one would have been like, why, why are you being charged for that? Why did you do that? And he's like, oh, I just don't know. I just lost it. Or, mm. oh, you know, driving convictions. He, he, he saw he was on it up for a driving conviction. And he, he called me before he come out and he's like, are you outside? There's loads of cameras. I said, no. So he put his head up, he put his mask. You know, so no one got a picture of him. I said, I don't do that. I was like, that's not fair. I was like, you know, they don't get paid if you don't do that. So he mm. went back and done it again. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. You know, he's, even though he's into... There's a method to it. It's yeah, almost he, like a character. He is, yeah. Yeah. And he's he is good. But I've only ever done one pre-fight picture of him because he, we never talk about work. So, he, you know, there's no... Whereas you think it's someone that you get on close, or not close, I'm saying close to him, but like someone you get on well with. I think, you know, we just saw Dave Allen, who's going to be on your podcast. You can ask him anything and he'll just say, yeah, let's go and do it. Whereas Derek, it took me to, before a weigh-in before, which is late to do a pre-fight picture for the following day, to do a picture because he's like, why do we have to do this? Mm. So he's difficult to work with, but he's a, he's a good person. How do you find Tyson Fury? Now, obviously, you've mentioned kind of the, the traveling and you've always wanted to go and photograph the heavyweight champion of the world in, in Las Vegas. Now, throughout 2019 and obviously early 2020 for World of Fury 2, me and you were gallivanting across uh, America, following him around for the Schwartz, Wallin, Wilder 1, which feels like forever ago. Um, what's your experiences like being with Tyson Fury? Was traveling around America with following the heavyweight champion of the world, so to speak, as everything that you'd hoped it would be what 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 time does this go out what's the, what's the language barrier <laughs> no you can say whatever you want he scares the shit out of me i don't know why i just i he just has this aura about him where you think don't say the wrong thing mm. cuz i don't think he cares if he'd pick you up and throw you in the, he hates media <laughs> yeah he does yeah i'm sure you've had your experiences i have yep yeah, yep yeah. So you know, I, and rightly so, in a sense. Why should he like media? What do we do for him? What he or it's very easy to be a photographer and be associated with the guy that would stand outside the nightclub or inside the nightclub. Yeah, of course. Yeah. To you have to get to a relationship level where they know that you aren't that person. I've never really broke that down with Tyson. I'm just a man with a camera. So therefore, I'm bad. But he is, and he has, as much as it's been, he's been great because without him, well, he's brilliant, isn't he? He's a brilliant fighter. He, he's he's funny. Um, other photographers have had different experiences, but if I say for, you know, if I need to get a picture of Tyson Fury, if I'm in America, that will be the deadline for a Vegas fight is for a weigh-in is past my last edition before the fight. So I have to get a picture of what would not replicate the weigh-in, but people want to see a top-off or a fighting picture, like a poster. Mm. And he's always it's always been, 
no, I'm not going to do this. No, I'm not going to do this. And I think with Tyson, is that the way I've worked with him is when I've, I've gone with an idea, whereas other people I haven't had. I've, not, I've obviously had ideas. I'm not just spur of the moment. But you can see with someone's mood and say, OK, let's do this then. They're feeling like this. With Tyson, I don't want to take my top off. I don't want to pose. I don't want to do this picture. So the last two times I've gone to see him, I've showed him what I want to do on my phone of somebody else and said, we can do this, but you're the man because he is the man. Mm. So the last time I went to see him was obviously for the Wilder fight. And I took a picture of his uncle who was the king of the gypsies. And it's an old fashioned gypsy pose. And I just said to Tyson, well, he's king of the gypsies. What well, you're the gypsy king. Let's do this picture. And within, he said, yep, yeah, okay, how long is it going to take? I said, as long as you take to do that. He pipped his top off, done the pose, and then because he was there, I said, I'll oh, just do this, just you know, just throw some punches at me, do this, do that, just tense up a bit, and that was it. I had seven, eight pictures of him. The person who went to see him the following day said, can you take your top off? He said no, and he wouldn't even take his hat off, and that could have been me. Um, but, it's, in, it's interesting you say that. I mean... Um, you mentioned kind of my experiences with Tyson. Mine's been very, very similar over the years. I think he, um, whether it's a trust issue or, or whether it's some, something similar to that, I think it probably took me about eight or nine different interviews with him to kind of make any kind of in, inroads, really. Um, I did an interview with him for the Wallin fight in September and I'd kind of, similar to you, really, I'll, I'll have an idea of what I want to cover with a fighter or, or, or the things that I'd like to talk to them about. But I don't really sit down and plan it and, and go, and okay, if he says this, like sometimes, very rarely. But for that particular interview, I'd kind of, it was the third time I'd, I'd gone to, to watch Fury in America. And I was kind of 0-3 really for, for interviews or, or I'd done interviews that were, you know, a minute long or, or whatever. And you know, there's various different reasons why that can happen. But I remember sitting down and kind of, right, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And eventually I kind of got there with him that one time. And then after that, when I saw him for the uh, the Wilder fight in, in February of 2020, it was okay, but it did take a few goes around with Tyson. So I definitely feel what you're saying there. He's, um, he's a unique character. And it's, um, I, I also get what you're saying when you say you, he scares you because he has that unpredictability. And also you mentioned the aura of him and, and being the heavyweight champion of the world, he could probably beat us both up, mate, you know? Um, he's a, he's a back very- Back to back at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> he's um. He's a unique character. Um, any fight you don't have to mention any names. Any fighters that are not great in front of camera who have been a bit of an issue. Um, I have to say, it it was very very early on, and I probably wasn't very good with dealing with people. It's the hardest thing in photography is dealing with a superstar, say, because you don't know. You originally you 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 have people on the outside will think well you must be their friend. Or you just know them and you don't. You, you just walk up to them and they see a hundred of you a week. So you're just another name that they've forgotten. And, but uh, Ricky Hatton, I was a massive, massive fan of. Massive fan. And I just started, I was freelancing at the Sunday People. And I can't remember what fight it was. And they basically got two tickets to give away. And they, uh, that, it was on my birthday. And it was, and I, I was a massive fan. I was very, 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 very new with the camera. And it was, can you go to, Man would you be up for going to Manchester um, and photographing Ricky Hatton with these tickets? So I was like, yeah, like yeah, what, what a birthday present. I'm yeah. going to tell him it's my birthday. Like I'll probably come away with like, he's such a legend. I'm going to come away with fight shorts and a t-shirt and probably some tickets myself. Mm. He's obviously in the height of cutting weight. He did not want to do this picture. And I remember, I remember thinking, never meet your fans. I'm sorry, never. If you're yeah, a fan, never meet your heroes. And like that, that whole drive back, I remember because I, I was 18 or 19, maybe. I was driving. No, I must be a bit older. Maybe 21. You, it was 21. It was you were 18 or 19 then, mate. Ugh. Yeah, maybe. Mm. 21. Uh, I'm 37. I could probably get the date, and I could get the fight if I look on box rec. Mm. This is one of some of the research I didn't do. <laughs> so, well, we we confirmed you at about midnight last night. Didn't yeah, we? <laughs> yeah. You asked me two weeks ago, Rob, would I come on this show? Yeah. And I said yes, although I was a bit nervous, and I you know, still am nervous. To You're talk. doing a grand job, yeah. Carry on. And you said we'll send a car, 
and we'll do it on like a Thursday and we'll try and get some lunch. You asked me at midnight <laughs> last night and it started with, sorry for not returning your call the other day. You liked it. Kevin likes to FaceTime people impromptu and it's not always possible to answer the FaceTime. Rob likes to FaceTime impromptu too. So if we want to do drop-ons, <laughs> I could show you some of the, you know, some of the screenshots that I have of you too. <laughs> All perfectly decent, by the way. If you like top off. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, you finish your story. Yeah, well, uh, so... On the way back from Ricky Hatton. I remember thinking, I, I was going, <laughs> going out to get drunk with my mate. And I remember thinking, I, I really just didn't feel... I felt flat. I'd done a rubbish picture. He didn't look great because he was blue. I was looking at my camera going, what colour is he? <laughs> he was in a bad mood. but And I hadn't really photographed him till two weeks ago. And I photographed him with Campbell. And I was really nervous because I was still a Ricky Hatton fan. No matter what, I still was a fan. I still was like, it was Ricky Hatton. Like, he was... I would have loved to have gone to these fights, mm. in, like, especially in Vegas. You know, to the Mayweather one, that was just, that was next level, wasn't mm. it? Mm. I mean, that, that Tyson, that Tyson, you know, that weigh-in, someone sent me a video of their weigh-in yesterday from the weigh-in, and I was like, you know, that, it wasn't as big as Ricky, but it was really... Still a huge fight, and there's something about, like, the heavyweight championship of the world in Las It was massive, Vegas. yeah, it's massive. You can't, it, you really can't beat that. Yeah, it, it was massive, and, but Ricky, yeah, Ricky pretty much started this without I don't think without Ricky or certainly without Ricky and Naz we wouldn't have had that that sort of weekend away mm. as it were because suddenly it became not just a fight it became a fight week and fight weeks probably weren't as big or maybe they were maybe me and you were just too young to appreciate what fight weeks then if you look mm. at especially Ali I mean how many rumble in the jungle they were there for months weren't they mm. so yeah make you feel old going to photograph Campbell uh, makes yes. me feel old, the fact that we're interviewing him. I remember him running around as a child yeah. during the Mayweather build-ups yeah. and stuff years ago. So what makes me feel really old was Campbell was saying that he's got a little, little yeah. kid. <laughs> and I still haven't grown up yet. So <laughs> to yeah. hear someone's kid that yeah, I photographed as a fighter saying they've got a kid is, um, yeah, age is catching up. It certainly is. Um, now, you do a lot of football. yes. I've got a question for you. Would you rather photograph... I, th I think this is quite an easy question to answer, actually. Would you rather photograph England in the World Cup final or AJ Fury? Oh. Because uh, The reason why I think this is slightly easier because you're going to get to do AJ Fury. Whether or not it happens this year or not, you, there's a good chance you'll get to do that, whereas there's probably a slightly lesser chance of you ever getting to do England in a World Cup final. I haven't photographed one boxing fight or one boxing show since Tyson Fury due to the pandemic. Mm. To ever go to a fight again, uh, I'm sure I will. I mean, I know I, I know I will. Well, you don't know. I guess you don't know. Uh, but oh, where's the fight going to be? Where? Yeah. That's a good. That's a good point, actually. Okay, let's go Wembley. And who? Uh, and who in England playing? And where are they playing? Both at Wembley. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. England versus Spain. It's a World Cup final match. Yeah. It's going to be one of six nations or something. Well, it's not though, is it? Brazil, Argentina, Italy. Because England France. wouldn't be one of the six, would well, they? No, they wouldn't. But this is a this is a completely hypothetical, yeah, hypothetical, hypothetical. fictitious world. Well, the thing is, if it was England winning the World Cup, it would definitely be that. But Tyson Fury winning the world title, I would have had that. AJ winning the world title, I would have had that. To be spoilt by it. It's so because I've, I've photographed them both winning the world title, AJ twice. It's it. It's got to be England in the World Cup final, mm. but that if I didn't, I don't know. I think kind of the the, the historical context yeah, of doing but England, England in the losing world Cup final. England losing five one to Germany <laughs> in the World Cup final, and then not going to see. Fury versus AJ, and they both go down four times. Yeah, <laughs> and it difficult ends to stomach. And it have that rocky, both going down finish, and it being an iconic picture forever. I think I'd rather. No, I, yeah, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. Well done. <laughs> um, 
I will let one of the judges uh, score at one one eight. <laughs> yeah. One ten for a draw. Oh God. Let's not get into judging. Let's st- let's stick to uh, photography and behind the scenes stuff. Let's not bother talking about. It. I might, to be fair, it might be good to get a judge one time. It would, they, it would be would be good. It'd be good to get a though. judge, a fighter, a photographer, and a writer all sit down and just have it out. Yeah, it'd be good, wouldn't it? It'd be interesting. Mm. Um, England okay. winning the World Cup. Yeah, I, it, it had has to, to be. really be that, didn't it? It really had to be that. Um, okay, so this this could need censoring. Fight weeks in Las Vegas. Now, Kev Quigley is actually Mr. Las Vegas. Now, without Frank Sinatra around anymore, he's he's slowly slotted in and filled that void as the most charming and charismatic man in Nevada when he's there. You love a bit of Vegas. Don't I love Vegas. So, I, you know, it's not solely to you, but you love a bit of Vegas, don't you? Your texts to me usually say, <laughs> do I fancy a bit of breakfast? <laughs> I can't attend sometimes because I haven't finished the night out. <laughs> Your your role on those Vegas fights, we spoke about Fury, and often we're in the top rank office together on a Monday, where you will go and you'll get, I, I can't remember what fight it was, it might have been the Wallin fight. It was fight, the Wallin fight. Where, I'm not going to get you in trouble here, am I, where you had to get a photo of Mr. Fury, and you got him on the Monday, I believe, which left you um, the remainder of the week for extracurricular activities in Las Vegas. My fight week is really three, three things. I need to get a fight week picture, which is like a poster picture. The Daily Mail like on the back page, a picture on the fight day of the weigh-in. America is just impossible to do that. So they want a picture that illustrates its fight week, whether that be either, you know, either or. But when it comes to when it comes to a Brit abroad, they don't often want they don't want the other fighter. If I went back with an exclusive of Otto Wallin, it's a bit of mm. so what? So you know, for Wilder Fury, if I've got Wilder, I've got the heavyweight champion of the world. I haven't not done my job, but for Fury Wallin, I need Fury. So I was under, and I went. I didn't go out that early. I went out on the Sunday, which is still a week in Vegas, but they they then days eat up pretty quick, um, especially with the time difference. You, we're going we're going to go and see him. It's not was it about four o'clock normally? I think something like that. Mm. You know, you usually could, straight off the plane. Yeah, if you yeah, if you land if you land on the Monday, and I have landed on that Monday, mm. and you are up against it, it's stressful. Mm. It's it's fun, but it, it's stressful. You can't go there and not you can't not do your job. You've got to remember how much is a fight week hotel. Well, if you're down the strip, it's cheap, but then you're missing everything. And as a photographer, I can't ask someone to say what happened there. I've missed it. I have to be there. So. You you you're very cagey, so yeah. For that fight week, I I was I had to get an exclusive picture of Tyson Fury to go in the Daily Mail either on the pullout if they're going to do a pullout or on the back page. It's definitely going to be a spread because Jeff Powell's a brilliant writer and mm. he's going to get he's going to get his stuff. He's going to get a good piece to for, to go. So I need a picture that's going to go with that to illustrate that I'm being there. And the the office have paid for me to go, so they want it. They can get the fight stuff off of another photographer. What they need is what they can't get. Mm. So that is that is a higher. Yeah, yeah. The fun that goes with it. There is a lot of smoke and mirrors. Definitely, mm. I want to make it look like it's very easy, and that people haven't got to worry about it. And then they get a phone call, normally Thursday night or Friday. You know, Friday afternoon or whatever time it may be, where we're having something after the weigh-in, and the papers have dropped and. I've got my exclusive, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, yeah, no, I did that. I did that Monday or Tuesday. Whereas people think I'm out for dinner or we're having a few drinks in a bar. I kind of do it. Mm. I will make it look like I'm having a great time, but I only want to have my. You know, I really work hard at the start. And again, at the end of the week, I think if you ever look at text message or WhatsApp groups, I've gone missing on Friday night. Mm. I'm not out because tomorrow's the day I'm going to work. Mm. So yeah, be that that sort of. Uh, is method in the madness. Yeah, I mean, I'm similar. When I when I go to Las Vegas, I always I try and sort of ham it up to my mates. We're in Vegas. We're doing yeah. this. We're doing that. But in reality, often for me, admittedly more so than you, I'm uh, stuck in a media room for 12, 14, 16 hours a day sometimes, and then um, we'll get out for maybe an hour or two, or try and see where you are. You're usually um, indisposed by that time or, or <laughs> I, there's, a, there's a small window Rob. <laughs> See, small window anytime between about 9pm and about 1 o'clock the following day <laughs> my office they usually start about midday 
So if I, I've got to make two choices. I've either got to get up really early in the morning in Vegas at three in the morning or so, whatever mm. time it may be, maybe three or two in the morning to call my office or I can just stay up mm. and give them a call before bed. So I, I go for that. I go for, <laughs> I go for that route. There is definitely a method in the madness. Um, right. I can't believe we've been speaking for about 40 minutes. Oh, really? Very, very illuminating so far. I hope everybody else agrees. It wouldn't be right not to um, to speak about the uh, the family element to the Quigley photography business. I am, of course, talking about Tom Quigley, um, <laughs> who will be delighted, I'm sure, to be uh, to be announced here. But, um, yeah, Tom Quigley. Tell everybody who Tom is. He's your... Um, he's, well, he's my little cousin. Um, he is an absolute boxing nut he's a Tottenham fan which is a problem um, but he is he I believe if you want to get if you want to get to somewhere you can get there like you just do it and he he just he really loves boxing he can I carry your bags can I can I do this can I do it and I, he's my cousin he's, he's my baby cousin so I'm like yeah come on in come along and before you know it he's gone to so many shows and then um, Simon at SAUK put a Facebook message out saying, and so did Neil, do I know any, does anyone know anyone that can hold a conversation, not be an idiot, and basically look after, look after the VIP section on fight nights? So I immediately thought, well, I'd, Tom would love that. Mm. He's working in boxing. He keeps coming to these shows. I can't, God knows how, many, how long ago this was now. So I messaged Simon and Neil and said, "Oh, I think my cousin would be quite good for this." And they said, "Oh, I thought he works for I thought he works for someone." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "No, he's just coming. Like he's just a fan that just knows he knows his p's and q's, and has a drink after." And he, they, I said, "He buys his tickets," and um, he said, "All oh, right, okay." And that was it. He, suddenly, he was running, you know, not running the VIP bar for a Matchroom show, but he's working at Matchroom on a fight night doing the VIP bar, and he loves the sport so much that. He ends up going for drinks with, say, TalkSport and yourself and the other journalists, and he's just become friends with them. And and people, everyone's like, "Who does he work for? What does he do?" <laughs> and he really just is just a fan that that works on the VIP bar on a match from show. He's, uh, I mean, I see him at shows more regularly than I see you sometimes. Well, he's, he's there really, working. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, now. so now he works there. So yeah. you know, no, nothing to do with me. He, you know, there's a match from show, and they've got fans in. There's a VIP bar. Tom, Tom's the man if you want to, uh, I would just say slip him 50 quid to get in, but that'll get him sacked. And yeah, it definitely uh, does not happen. Yeah, it doesn't actually happen <laughs> no, as well. He says, he says people offer him. He's, 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 you know, he's, yeah, he's a good lad. And I actually texted him saying I was coming in today and he just said, oh, you're photographing it. So I said, no, I'm talking. And you know, yeah, he said to say hello. Oh, well, um, hello to you too, Tom. And um, congratulations on your debut appearance um, on the boxing social, well, boxing behind the scenes, not the boxing well, social. You podcast. could probably get him in because he is behind the scenes. He is behind the scenes. So maybe we'll have a. Um... What goes on in the VIP bar? Oh, yeah, that, that could be potentially quite interesting. If you never want to go back to a show again. I was going to say, there'll be a few people sweating on the outcome of that one. Uh, that might be a good one to record and then blackmail some people with. But um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Um, I think we're probably about there, Kev. I found this very interesting. Um, despite the fact that we've travelled the world together for a couple of years now, two or three years, I, I feel like I barely know you, or I haven't seen you for the last year, which has um, been difficult for everybody. I mean, how has that kind of affected you? I know you've obviously been very fortunate in the sense of being able to work on the football, um, which is great, but not having that... Re I know how much I've missed it, and I'm not as close to the ring as you. Um, so I can only imagine like that, not having that, for a lot, for, since that fight especially because it was such a brilliant night and it was such a raucous atmosphere not having that for the last 12 months and I imagine you missed it if that's what I go out on yeah I guess that's and it's a pandemic Look, I've got to you've got to be realistic I, there's 8 of us or 6 of us or you know maybe 10 or 12 in America that's it that sit ringside for that fight I'm just lucky to have done it mm. I'm not, you know, that's not being me being old man, but at some point, like, I won't do it again. And I wanted to go to the heavyweight championship of the world, and I did. And AJ's brilliant. He's so great to work with as well. So lucky to photograph him. Um, how different is he, sorry to interrupt, how different is he to work with from your perspective than Tyson Fury? I can't even make a comparison. I've never done an interview with AJ. Oh, really? Never. 
Oh, right. He, yeah, he, look, he's much more commercial. Yeah. So I can't. Seems like well, well drilled in that yeah, kind of I don't get to photograph him for a fight day picture. Mm. They will put that out. Mm. But that's, you know, that's, that's what it is. Don't, don't moan because you don't get something. Just, mm. I'm more, well, I'm grateful to get it. Um, I push for it, but I don't, I'm not, I don't think that AJ's going to give me a right hook. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson is always in whereas that, isn't I, that's it? how I feel <laughs> with Tyson. I, I, but I, I I love we are so lucky as mm. boxing that like, to be now working in boxing. We are so lucky. I think I said lucky about a hundred times. It's true though. It's true. I, I actually said this to Al Siesta earlier, and I kind of used to get a bit indignant when people used to say to me, like, "Oh, you're so lucky." I said, oh, "I'm not fucking lucky. I work really hard at my job, and I do this and I do that." And then, kind of, when it's been taken away now for the last twelve months, you think, like, "Yeah, you're a dickhead. You're really lucky yeah. to be doing what we we've done." It's kind of absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, I, I've never gone to a show and gone, "Look, there's the same as ev- any spool." There'll be a boring night. That's, but these people put being working w- with people and the fighters and seeing how much they put in. What I hate is you know people say, "Oh, he's rubbish." He's not rubbish. If he's number say eleven or twelve or even fifty in the world at his weight category, and they say, "Oh, he stunk the place out." Well, you pay fifty pound for a nil-nil draw, and that's twenty-two players on the pitch that are starting. They're not the top 50 of the world. Mm. They're just 22 in a league of squads of 25. So I I love the sport and I really am in awe of it. And I'm, yeah, I love it. And AJ's, AJ's not going to chin me next time he sees me. Fury might. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, so that, that day that we were talking about when um, the Wallin fight week, I am... Um, Ben Davison was training Tyson at the time and I'd sort of spoke to Ben. I was like, come on, Ben, like, fuck. I've travelled, like, to America three times now. I've not really got anything with him. Like, I've got, like, a couple of minutes where he just kind of wanted to go. And, you know, he's, you catch Fury at the end of the day. He just wants to get out of there. He doesn't want to do you. Again, he just sees man with camera, man with microphone. Um, and I'd kind of spoke to Ben. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, I'm, really, I'm going to prepare. I sat in my hotel room and really thought, right, okay, I'm going to ask this and then this and this. And so um, it got to it when, on that day in um, Top Rank's office. And Fury, I've told this story before, and Fury um, came over and he said, Right, Rob, I've got to do a good interview with you, haven't I? Because I pissed about last time. And I said, Yeah, yeah, Tyson, if that's okay. And he said, I'll tell you what. See my brother over there. And every, Shane is a, you know, all of the Furies are big, but Shane's also pretty big. He said, If you let him punch you in the face, I'll give you the best interview you've ever had in your life. And I went, can he punch me in the stomach? And he went, you're on. So I said, Shane, get over here. He said, right, Rob, are you ready? And I said, yeah. So I put my hands up. It's in the middle of top rank office. So you've got like a lot of people around at the time, journalists, like, like print guys, video guys, as well as like Bob Arum and people like that. And so I stood there to tense up and Shane has kind of wound the fist back and gone, ah! and then Fury went, tell you what, you can have your interview now. And then after that, that was the interview that did well. And then after that, we were okay. And I think the fact that I was willing to take a punch from Shane Fury kind of proved me to him. Well, it's funny you should say that because then he did come and see me and he was in a good mood. So I, he, he, I photographed him on the way out. So after he'd done your interview and I was nervous. And I don't you remember there was a power cut? Mm. Yes, yes, I do remember. Jesus, yeah. So there was a power cut. And I had you're going to go to the back, the back room of the green screen. Yes. So yeah. I went into the green screen room to do it. And I had all my lights set up and I had a mark on the floor where to stand. And I said, he went, you're not going to ask me to take my, t- my hat off, are, are you? And I was like, yes, I am going to take you to take your hat off. And I was like, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> here we go. And he went, you're not going to ask me to take my chain off, though, are you? So I said, well, you can keep your chain on if you want. I said, but I am going to ask you to take your vest off. And he said, no way on earth I'm doing that. And... ITV were filming his reality or documentary yeah, yeah, yeah. at the same time. And he said something. I'm, I'm not taking my top off. And I said, but you're in fantastic shape. I photographed you at your worst. Not your worst, but, you know, when you went to the show and everyone, that was a picture, you were big. It'd be great to photograph you. You looked tremendous. And he did look tremendous. And he went, I'm not taking my top off. And he said something. And then the, the sort of cameraman sort of like looked at and he went, oh, I'm just kidding with you. And he took his top off. With that, the lights went off. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't taken a picture. I had no idea where he's standing. And I was like, just throw some punches at me and just tense right up. 
and I just started pressing. My lights were going off. There was no light. I had no light. I had no idea. I looked at it. It was sharp. The lighting's terrible on it. Mm. But I didn't. I knew if once the lights, the lights come on, you put your top off. He walked out. But I didn't have the guts to say, "Can you come back?" <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not it's not the way you want to go about things with Tyson. Um, yeah, but he he's a unique character. And it kind of it adds to it, doesn't it? It kind of makes um. It makes it all the more better when you get what you want or you get what you need, and it, he does make you work for it. So it's um, it's all the more sweeter when it eventually comes off. Yeah, uh, I'd much rather it was a lot easier. But yeah, you know, it, I mean, I I don't get to photograph AJ like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't be as fearful. But then I've, there's so many fighters out there that are so great that you can, you know, you can text them and say, "Can I come and see you? Can I take? Can we do this? Can we do that?" I mean, I, I did a project on training at home and fighters you wouldn't expect that would say during lockdown this was can I come to your house and like take your picture and just expecting a no like Amir Khan yeah come round and you just think like that's Amir Khan like mm. he, he's he's a, they're global superstars and they're just like here's my address tell me what time you come around it's like no other sport in the world um, Tom Hauser kind of said to me once that and when he was a lawyer he wanted to make the move into kind of journalism and sports journalism and he looked at the various different avenues that he could go into. And he said, you know, if I went down to Yankee Stadium, I couldn't go and interview the Yankees. If I went to Madison Square Garden, I couldn't go and interview the Knicks. But you can walk into almost any gym in the world and speak to a world champion fighter. And it's not like that in any other sport. And that's part of kind of the the beauty of boxing. And, and maybe you know, the, the origins of boxing is, is traditionally a, a working class sport. People are very kind of open and, and, and will allow you in and, you know, also, it's worth pointing out that boxing, despite me and you being in this kind of boxing bubble, as as, as we always refer to it, it's um, it's a niche sport, it's a combat sport, and, and you'll often find that fighters are very grateful for the opportunity. I mean, somebody like Amir Khan doesn't need fucking boxing social or anybody, but, you know, that often fighters will be grateful for the opportunity for the additional exposure. And you kind of, because you see what, what titans they are in the ring it, it kind of makes it all the better when when you do come across and the vast majority of boxers from my experience at least are very humble very welcoming guys who, who will kind of have you in and the fact that they go from being kind of absolute savages in the ring to 99 percent of the time being absolute gentlemen outside of the ring and welcoming you in it kind of makes it all puts it all together and makes it really special for me yeah i, I agree but yeah what you know you said about not interviewing AJ and obviously it's someone you want to you know you want mm. to interview AJ but he's an Olympic gold medalist have you ever interviewed Usain Bolt no. do you know anyone that has Ron <laughs> maybe <laughs> Ron's maybe probably Ron yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah Ron's a legend yeah, I mean Ron. I'll say that you're not a legend yeah. but you know Ron's Ron, a legend Ron is a legend but yeah Ron Lewis shout out Ron Lewis yeah shout out Ron Lewis okay Lionel Messi no but that but, is that is who we're talking, and yeah. Tyson Fury is that as well. Mm. So even if we never go to see Tyson Fury again, and he doesn't get to punch my head in or scare <laughs> me, or scare me, that's the level that we get to see, and it's so. Oh, I'm just happy, you know. That's to talk about it as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy to listen to you. Right before I let you go, because we are due to be joined by uh, Lawrence O'Coley. someone proper in the sport. No, absolutely the not. Not to say that he's not, but you are very much proper as well. Um, before I let you go, we've spoken about the two of them, so I'm going to ask you now: AJ or Fury, who wins? Twenty-five to one's the draw, isn't it? Don't sit on the fence. Um, I think if AJ can get to him within three rounds, which he could do. I don't know that what Tyson's training like. AJ will be training hard, and AJ's an Olympic gold medalist. I've made the mistake of not backing the Olympic gold medalist before, and they often win. <laughs> so he's good, but Tyson Fury is ridiculous, I think. He moves. He. I didn't think Klitschko would... I thought AJ would dance around Klitschko, and he didn't dance around Klitschko. And I thought Klitschko was going to dance around Fury and Fury dance around him. So if that's a, any way of, I think there's a good chance that you could see it going late and the later it gets. Tyson is just so big. Uh, it's For me, it's AJ early, Tyson late. Uh, but it, it's heavyweight boxing and I don't know if you won any money on White Povetkin. Yes. Yeah, because you bet a gold medalist. Um, but what on the rematch, I can't see that going the same way. No. I think no. Dylan White will learn from it and he has learned and he will, give him a good lesson 
Um, so, who, so who wins, AJ or Fury? <laughs> I, um, England in the World Cup final. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go first. I think Tyson Fury wins by decision. Decision? Mm. Whoa, that's a good shout. That's a good shout. I, I think he. I, I think he stops him late. Either or, but I also I, I'm not one of these people who cannot see a possible way AJ wins. But I if, absolutely if, do. if I ever see AJ, if I groupie one of his nights out somewhere, um, and he says <laughs> you said I was going to lose, he would win. Yeah, <laughs> I watch the box. If he's watching the boxing social podcast, AJ, great. come give us an interview. Yeah, and can I do a portrait? <laughs> Okay, Kev Quigley, thank you very much for stopping by today. I've really enjoyed this. It's been a few weeks um, in the pipeline. Admittedly, we only got you confirmed last night, but I'm very, very glad we did. That is all from the first episode of Boxing Behind the Scenes um, with me, Rob Tebbett, with you, Kev Quigley. Thanks very much for stopping by. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. And hopefully we can do it again soon. 